Hello and welcome to Code Slicing. In this exciting series, we're going to be using an elegant combination of combine, property wrappers and state objects to debounce user input. Now, don't panic if you're not too familiar with the world of combine. We're going to be using it in a relatively simple way, extracting the bits we need to get the job done. Very happy to go into more detail with combine in a future video, so let me know in the comments if that's something you'd like to see. Come to think of it, if literally anything I say is confusing to you, let me know and I'll do my best to explain either in a comment or future video. So debouncing user input. Why do we even want to do this? Well, oftentimes as developers, we find ourselves in the position where we're using input from a user to drive a search or a filter. And you don't really want to be responding instantly to every single key press. So what we want to do is slow down the rate at which the effective input changes, and that is known as debouncing. So while the user is free to type as fast as they like, we only want to be acting on that input after they've stopped typing for a predetermined delay. In order to achieve this in a reusable and elegant way, there are three things we need to do. First, we need to do the actual debouncing. And in this episode, we're going to do that using the combined framework. Secondly, we're going to take that functionality and hustle it quite aggressively into a custom property wrapper, allowing us to use it wherever we want this kind of behavior. The third stage will be to take the resulting property wrapper and make it work for different kinds of state processing. Let's get down to business. As you can see, I've got a text entry field and a text output field, which displays what the user is typing. I've also added a counter to show how many times the state is being updated. You can find the source in the description if you want to have a play around. I'm using the simulator here rather than the preview since typing into a text field using the keyboard doesn't work in Xcode 13.2 or any previous version that I'm aware of. Since we're just displaying the state in the output field, as I type into the text editor view, you can see the result instantly populates the text field below. The counter there is showing just how many requests we would be initiating if we were listening to the changes in that state and basing some kind of filter on it. Once we're done, we want to see the text field below only updating once I've stopped typing for a bit, resulting in a much smaller update count. Got it? Let's do it. The first thing I'm going to do is create a class called debounced state, conforming to the observable object protocol. And now I'm going to add two properties both of which are going to be using the published property wrapper. Although SwiftUI exports the published property wrapper, it's actually part of the combined framework. So I'm going to import it now because we're going to need it later on. So we've got at published var current value, which is a string, and a debounced value, which is also a string. The current value is going to hold the actual user input, and the debounced value is going to hold the result of our debouncing. Now, the fact that published is part of the combined framework is a clue that the functionality that drives the behavior we're going to be tapping into uses combine under the covers. So even if you've never used combined publishers and subscribers explicitly, you've certainly been using them implicitly if you've done any state management involving this property wrapper. Next, we're going to need an initializer and it's going to take two parameters, the initial value of the state, which is a string, and the delay we want to use, which we will default to a double of 0.3 seconds. You'll notice that we didn't set initial values for these properties when we declared them. And that's because we want to control the initial value by explicitly setting the value of the property wrapper in the initializer. At this point, it's useful to know a thing or two about property wrappers and how they work. So if you haven't seen my series on that topic or feel in any way uneducated on the principles involved, I recommend taking a look at that before going any further. But with that said, we want to access the property wrapper itself. So we'll be using the underscore version of the property and assigning it to a new published object, setting the initial value to the initial value that's been passed in, and we'll set the debounced value to the same thing. Before we go any further, let's wire this new state object into our view. To do that, we'll change this from state to state object, since we're using an observable object, and we're going to initialize it with a debounce state object with an initial value of empty string. Then we're going to use the current value for the binding we'll be passing into our text editor here and set the debounce text to be the debounced value, 
We're also going to base the counter on when the debounced value property is changing. Now that's done, since we passed in a binding to the current value into the text editor view, we want to update the debounced value in some way when the current value changes, or this isn't actually going to do anything. This is where the magic happens, where we will be subscribing to the current value publisher and configuring the pipeline to update the debounced value appropriately. As we know, published is a property wrapper, and one thing that property wrappers can provide is access to something called the projected value, which can be anything. In the case of the published property wrapper, the projected value is in fact the combined publisher itself. How do I know that? It's in the documentation. As you can see, the projected value is of type publisher, and it clearly states that this exposes the publisher for the property marked with the published attribute. It even helpfully tells you that it is accessed with the dollar prefix version of that property. It's wonderful to get an API that's so thoroughly and thoughtfully commented, so take advantage of it. Let's first access the publisher of current value, which we now know is done by using the dollar prefix version of that property. And before we do anything else, and to keep things simple, we can subscribe to that publisher by adding a sync, which takes a closure which is run whenever the current value publishes an update. The value in this case represents the changing values coming down the pipe as the user types into the text editor, thereby updating our current value. And we're just going to assign this value to the debounced value property. Now let's run this and see what happens. As you can see, nothing is happening. And the reason nothing is happening is because the subscriber we created using sync is going out of scope at the end of the initializer. So by the time our state object has been fully initialized, the subscriber we took so much care to create has been destroyed. In fact, there's a little warning here saying we are ignoring the returned value. So that's a hint that we need to store it somewhere. And I'm going to do that in a private variable called subscriber. This is of type any cancelable, and I'm going to make it optional so we can essentially assign a closure involving a property to it without the compiler getting upset. And since now we are essentially storing our sync closure, we need a capture list to avoid a strong circular reference. We'll be finding an alternative to this a bit later on, but for now I'm going to use unowned since I know self is going to be around as long as the subscriber is. And this should now be updating as we type. Awesome. We've done a whole lot of work to get precisely nowhere. However, we are now in a position to debounce it by configuring the stream to do just that. This is as simple as adding the debounce operator before our sync using the delay we've got in seconds as the first argument and tell it we want to deliver updates on the main thread. What's happening is that the debounce operator subscribes to the original publisher, does some work on the values it receives and publishes those results. Our sync then subscribes to that publisher and receives the results of the debounce operation. Let's set the delay to one second so we can really see what's going on here. And then if I run it again, as I type, we only get updates if I stop typing for longer than one second. And now we've got everything we need to move on to stage two. Before we finish, however, let's look at some variations we have available to us for subscribing to the results. Instead of sync, we have the ability to add assignment subscribers in which data coming down the pipe is assigned in some way to the thing you specify. The most similar version to the one we currently have is the one that takes a key path to the property we want to update and pass in self for the object. The result will be exactly the same, although less verbose, without the need to worry about capture lists or anything like that. If, however, you want to get really fancy, when using the app publish property wrapper, you have the option of passing in the publisher of debounced value itself, recalling that this is accessed with the dollar prefix version of the property we want to update, and we pass it in as an in out argument by prefixing that with the ampersand operator. The combined framework will then use that publisher to affect updates on that property. A benefit of using this approach is that we no longer need to store a subscriber anywhere since that's all handled internally, meaning we can get rid of this assignment and the property backing it. Much cleaner. And this is the version we're going to use going forward. Once again, this is all explained in the documentation, the relevant sections you can see here. Well worth a read if you have the time.
Now, if you're at all familiar with Combine, you might be wondering if the throttle operator would be a good candidate to give us the result we're looking for. The answer is, it would work, sort of, but there is a clear and significant difference in behavior. Let's take a look by commenting out our debounce operator and instead adding a throttle operator with a delay of the same value, the same scheduler, and adding an argument of whether or not to take the first or last value from the specified interval. We'll be interested in the latest version of using this technique, so I'm going to set that to true. We can also take this opportunity to remove the explicit one second delay since we're going to be using the default and running that up in the simulator will show that no matter how fast I'm mashing the keyboard, we will get updates 0.3 seconds apart. Always. Well, as long as the input is changing. So this means that we still end up with unnecessary updates to our filter value and that is why we're going to be using debounce rather than throttle when we move on to stage two. Just to tie things off, let's first set this back to debounce and make our state a little more flexible by making it generic over value and replacing string with that so we can use it with any type we like. And that's all for this episode. Join me in the next episode where we're going to be taking what we've done and make it immensely reusable by turning it into a property wrapper that we can use in place of a state property wrapper. So join me for that. It's going to be brilliant. Oh, and if you haven't watched that series on property wrappers I mentioned before, sometime between now and the next episode will be a great time to do it. If you're enjoying it so far, don't forget to like the video. And if you're interested in what the rest of this series might bring, consider subscribing so you don't miss it. If you have any questions, comments or suggestions, please leave them below. And in the meantime, thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time. Bye.